Please join me in welcoming to the stage, Douglas Atkin. Thank you. Hi. Thanks very much for having me. So, um, despite, uh, despite some who think otherwise, notably some politicians, not David Chu, um, and some incumbent industry lobbyists, we at Airbnb and peers think the sharing economy or peer to peer economy is a jolly good thing. We think it's such a good thing, in fact, that it probably will and it certainly should become a dominant global economic model. And the reason why is because the last economic model, the production and consumption one, promised much but chronically under-delivered. It promised economic independence, it promised freedom, it promised self-actualization, and yes, even happiness. And I know this personally because I'm the devil, actually. I worked in advertising for decades in London and New York, and I helped tell millions of consumers, which is a word I've always hated, um, that happiness can be found in a credit card, a car, or a condom. Well, actually, maybe it can be found in a condom, but not always. But, um, but, it's, but not really in a credit card and a car. Um, the, sharing and pe the sharing or peer-to-peer -peer economy deserves to succeed, I believe, because the very things that became the casualties of the old economy, the last economy, things like community, um, things like control and economic independence, are actually built into the very infrastructure of this new economy. You can't do this new economy without creating community, without buyers and sellers meeting each other, without hosts and guests engaging with each other. It's, it's, it's part of the very fabric of the economy. Yet in the last one, especially when I was in advertising, I would see surveys every year depressingly track uh, people saying, I wish I could spend more time with my neighbors. I wish I could spend more time with my family. And as it, commute times increased, the amount of socialization and community decreased. So here's a short video I'm going to show you. It's about two minutes long um, of some workshops and focus groups I did about a year and a half ago now um, in San Francisco and New York, where I talked to some hosts and guests of Airbnb. So um, it's not representative, I know, but it is indicative. And uh, the common themes you'll hear in this, and we hear all the time, is from hosts, stories of transformation. This economic independence has enabled them to um, to come basically have a regular income that enables them to do the things they always wish they could have done. You know, write that book or start that business or like Rob in New York, he, uh, always, he's a real estate agent, hates it. Now he shares his spare room. He is able to focus, go to school for acting, for example, which is something he always wanted to do. He's happier. And also from, you'll hear from guests as well. What we hear all the time from guests, and this is sort of the idea really, is that they now feel that they can belong anywhere. That they're almost like the world's local because they're living with locals and experiencing neighborhoods and small businesses that they would never do if they were in the center of town staying in a hotel. Um, they feel at home wherever they go, basically. So let me just play you the short video. In my, my life before Airbnb, um, I always felt very beholden. I felt very beholden to the company that I was working for. And now I just feel completely free. It's my husband and I, and we're running this business. I get a lot of personal joy out of hosting. It's my favorite thing to do. All of a sudden, I feel like human again. I feel like more of like myself. This has allowed me to just welcome like that traveler feeling in my home. I'm definitely a lot more just at ease with myself and I'm definitely more optimistic about like approaching people. And now I live with a roommate from Airbnb and huh. he, he's really one of the coolest people I've met. So this allowed me to have the life that I knew that I was capable of, that I knew that I wanted. I just couldn't figure out financially. It has also motivated, motivated me in my personal circumstance to uh, get my contractor's license and start building tree houses. I sent a little picture of my 12-year-old son, and he's, he's benefiting from meeting all these people. By discovering Airbnb, we learned what it was like to really be a local. Actually, it uh, kind of unleashed this adventurer in me that I didn't know existed. So can you give me two words of what you were like before and two words of now? Shy and a follower. And what about now? Outgoing and fun. And this has been probably the most thrilling thing that I've done. 
I'm actually doing something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I'm taking printmaking classes. I tend to host a lot of people in the arts communities. It's been a really nice influence on me, having confidence to do this kind of thing. This bracelet is, uh, you know, from a friend I met on Airbnb. This, this uh, sweater is from Estonia. I was there because of another oh, really? trip I took because of mm -hmm. Airbnb. So it's, it's just like it's who I am. Really. It's all three words. So, um, that, I'm sorry about that music in the background, it kind of was a bit soppy, but um, I think you get the idea that, um, that the, the, these, we hear that literally all the time these stories of transformation, it's very, very encouraging. So, the reason why I think we're beginning to hear these things is that there's a decentralization of wealth and control and power, and that's at the heart of why the peer-to-peer -peer economy is better uh, than the pure production consumption economy, where wealth, control, and power ap were absolutely centralized. That's why this economy is a better economy, in my view. When I worked at Meetup, um, I became a huge fan of self-organization and decentralization. Given the tools we saw, um, people do amazing things when they self-organize together. So Airbnb, of course, is, and most of the other platforms, is a decentralized marketplace where most of the wealth is made and most of the community is self-organized. But we took this a step further a year ago, well, actually about six months ago, um, and we also decentralized the community platform and self-organized it on Airbnb. So I just want to actually do a quick romp through this to show you um, how that's working. So, um, so we launched this platform about six months ago. And it's where our hosts start, run, and join their own communities. We don't moderate them. They're not our communities. They're our host communities, totally owned by them. So just to give you a, a, an idea, this is um, a random selection of communities that emerged in New York. So there's a Brooklyn host collective. There's even the New York City sharing economy group. Um, there's uh, hyper-localized ones. There's legalized sharing in New York. This is Evelyn here and Chris, who I think are here in the audience somewhere. Awesome hosts who started that. Um, this is the one in uh, this is one in Barcelona. They're all over the world. So there's ones about hosting, but there's also ones like this one here, which is totally focused on laws and taxes. And this one is about taking uh, political action. The one at the top in the middle there. And this is kind of what the homepage looks like. Basically, this is one of them called the New Host Forum. It has 5,396 members, and we're here to learn. Uh, from each other through supportive and effective feedback, online coaching, and uh, membership. So, so far, about 60,000 hosts have joined these, and there's about 50,000 posts. But the most gratifying thing is that, and this is a key indicator I've learned of any successful community, is that um, you can tell you've got a successful community when there's lots of mutual support when the members are helping each other because they feel a mutual responsibility and affinity and a relationship with each other. So um, we see this in things like, uh, you know, this, is, this was from yesterday, I think, no, three days ago, my latest good idea, where people are putting up good ideas and then people are commenting. But they're also giving e each other practical help about things like the dark and curlies. It's an inevitable consequence of hosting and it has to be discussed. Thankfully there and not with us. Um, <laughs> It's very illuminating, actually, reading these posts. Um, <laughs> so um, another way that, um, oh, and this is, um, uh, you can form meetups on this platform. So this is one that was just posted recently. This is a volunteering meetup to help paint, um, I think it's a school, yes, a school, um, run by L in New York. Um, so they're using this to help their local community. Our community is helping its local community. Um, and here's uh, the other great thing about decentralized and self-organized communities is that they um, are massive innovators. This is Maria. She started this because she basically wants to start a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform. We didn't do this. She did this. She's amazing. So she wants to take some of the money she's earned on Airbnb and lend it at really, really below bank rate levels to help people buy that lampshade or that bed and start hosting, which is just awesome, I think. The other interesting way that um, self-organization happens is, and I, uh, this is something I'm, I really, really love, is that there's, 
is, is that basically what we're seeing here is this new model of decentralized power. It's a decentralized power model. And people are using their communities now to take political action. This is Peter Kwan's group, has 100, uh, eight, 821 members, home shows of San Francisco. It's a non-profit community group, basically totally focused on um, passing fair laws and figuring out the taxes. And for example, it's funny that David was just here. He's organizing on uh, May 14th um, a review of David Chu's proposed legislation, which is awesome. He's got loads of people showing up here, as you can see. Um, the other thing that's happening, which is also fantastic, and this is a very local, it's happening in Barcelona, New York, and other cities around the world on the platform, is that uh, people are self-organizing into local um, neighborhood groups. And so this is a local neighborhood group. I'm not sure where this one is, but it met just a few weeks ago, or a few days ago, actually. And then, because this organization is being created, when necessary and when they feel under threat, they can take overt political action. So a couple of weeks ago, maybe some of you were there, but this is a demonstration or a rally outside City Hall when some politicians wanted to propose a ballot initiative that would have seriously threatened our hosts, business and guests staying in the city. So I'm just showing you a couple of pictures here. It was very well done. There was about 150, 200 people in attendance. People gave speeches. They had great uh, posters like Make It Fair to Share. That's Peter Kwan giving interviews to the press. These are some of my favorite posters. Let It Be, Airbnb. This one I love here. Support home, it's a picture of share. Home sharing. I host you, babe. And it's so San Francisco, I love it. <laughs> so anyway, this is, the real, I just wanted to share you, uh, with you some of these few examples because uh, to me it's gratifying to see that in this peer-to-peer -peer sharing economy, which is totally about decentralization and self-organization. People are also self-organizing in ways uh, to help themselves, including taking political action where necessary. So thank you very much for your time. <laughs>